Hello seafarers, welcome to Sailor School. This is the fifth part of the series Polar Code and in this video I will be talking about from chapter 5 to chapter 10 which is the left out of the Polar Code I didn't explain other videos. Moving on, let us talk about chapter 5 Watertight and Weathertight Integrity. First of all, I hope you have a good knowledge about the difference between the watertight and the weathertight. In case if you don't know, how will however tell you right now watertight fitting has the ability to withstand water pressure from both sides and watertight fitting will be usually present below the water line of the ship and example if you consider for watertight fittings then you can think about uh, bow visor or stern ramps present in the roro ships weathertight means any fitting to which can withstand water pressure from the outside Examples of weather tight fitting is the hatch covers in bulk carrier and accommodation doors etc. And weather tight fittings will usually be above the water line of the ship. Now let us understand what polar code has to say about water tight and weather tight integrity. This chapter mentions that there shall be ways to prevent or remove ice and snow caused due to ice accretion around the hatches and doors. In case if doors or hatches are hydraulically operated, some methods must be provided to prevent freezing or excessive viscosity of liquids. This is usually done by adding antifreeze, maintaining the viscosity of liquid at a temperature by heating it. If there are any hatches or doors which are not within the habitable environment, habitable environment means a place which is safe from harsh weather conditions and other hazards and these doors or hatches require access while at sea to be operated by personnel wearing heavy winter clothing chapter 6 missionary installations all missionary installations on board a polar ships must be capable of delivering the required functionality which is necessary for safe operation of ships the missionary installations on polar ships must have the ability to operate in its best performance even when ice accretion, snow accumulation, ice ingestion from seawater, freezing, increased viscosity of liquids, seawater intake temperature, when all these external factors affect. Additionally, when ships operating in lower temperature, in such ships, missionaries fitted on them must consider the facts like cold and dense inlet air and loss of performance of battery or other storage energy device due to cold air temperature. Overall, the main motto of this chapter is to make a better standard missionary installations which has consistent performance even when they face the worst climatic conditions. As you know, some missionaries use seawater for cooling purposes. So the missionaries which use seawater must have ability to adjust the water intake temperature and snow ingestion must be prevented for ships in low air temperature all the working liquids such as hydraulic oils coolant oil etc must be maintained in a viscosity range which is appropriate for the machinery all electrical installations and appliances must be able to function at polar surface temperature the combustion air for internal combustion engine for driving the essential machinery must be maintained at a temperature which is mentioned by the engine manufacturer. This is done by heating the air before we inlet the air into the combustion engine. In case of ice strengthened ships, so basically you know that any ships the machinery which is present outside the hull is only propeller steering gear. So the propeller and the steering equipment must be Polar class approved, especially for category A and B ships. Chapter 7 Fire Safety and Protection. The term fire safety includes both fire fighting systems and escape routes in case of emergency. The requirements of this chapter include all ships having fire safety systems and appliances. If they are installed in exposed positions, then they must be protected from ice accretion and snow accumulation. All the fire safety systems which are designed 
they must take into consideration that persons who are wearing heavy layers of winter clothing or four to five layers of winter clothing must be able to operate such systems with comfort of snow and ice accretion to be prevented or means to be provided to remove snow and ice from the access the fire safety systems shall be designed to operate to its full potential at polar service temperature the isolating valve and the pressure vacuum valves present on the exposed locations must remain accessible at all times two way radio communication systems should be able to operate at polar service temperature fire pumps including emergency fire pump water mist and water spray pumps etc shall be located in such a compartments which is maintained above the freezing temperature the fire hydrants in exposed sections must be designed in such a way that it can be isolated when not necessary as well as it can be drained easily the fire fighters outfit should be stored in warmer location the ship if there is any fixed water based fire fighting system on board the ship they must be provided with a separate c section apart from the main c section which is used for the main fire pumps portable and semi portable fire extinguisher must be present at locations which are as safe as practicable and also must be protected from the freezing under the polar service temperature all the components or equipments of the fire safety systems must be approved by the administration or other recognized organization which is approved by the administration eventually chapter 8 life saving appliances and arrangements so this chapter is explained under three different topics escape evacuation and survival so let us talk about one by one to understand it escape all exposed escape routes must be accessible and must be free from icing and they must have equipments to remove icing also survival craft and muster station should be such that they provide safe abandonment from the ship even in the worst weather conditions the spacing of the escape routes must be such that even after wearing layers of winter clothing or polar temperatures the person should move freely evacuation as said earlier the path to reach the survival craft must be safe and free from ice if not the equipment must be provided to clear ice off all the life saving appliances must be fully functional under harsh weather conditions and for maximum time life saving appliances must be capable of operating with a power source that is independent from the ship's main power source moving on to the survival in passenger ships a proper sized immersion suit a thermal protective aid should be provided for each person on board the immersion suit must be of insulated type so that it has ability to keep the person alive in the cold weather also if polar ships are working under continuous darkness periods then search light should be provided for each lifeboat the reason for search light is to identify the icebergs or missing people etc lifeboats on polar ship must always be either fully enclosed or partially enclosed type personal survival equipment and group survival equipments must be such that they provide effective protection against direct wind chill and they must also provide efficient thermal insulation to maintain the core body temperature of the survivor and it must be also able to prevent the frostbite at, at all extremities the personal and group survival equipment must compound up to 110% of the persons on board containers which carry the group survival equipment must be designed in such a way that that they are floatable in waters and easily movable on top of ice crew should be trained to use personal survival equipment as well as the group survival equipment okay last but not least adequate emergency rations means emergency rations of proper quantity must be provided so that maximum time of expected rescue also the survivors must not die of hunger or weakness now let us move on to the next chapter chapter 9 safety of navigation as the name of the chapter suggest aim of this chapter is for safe navigation when operating in ice darkness 
high latitudes and as well as when taking ice breaker assistance ships must have appropriate equipment that has the ability to receive up to date information including ice information for the safe navigation the navigation equipment on board ship must be constructed and installed in such a way that they perform their tasks to their maximum under any environmental conditions ships must have ability to visually detect ice and operating in darkness ships involved in an ice breaker escort shall have a suitable means to indicate when the ship is stopped ship which are constructed on or after january 1st 2017 and ice strengthened ship should have two independent echo sounding devices or one echo sounding devices with two independent transducers the bridge must be fitted with a clear view screen a stern also ships must be provided with means to prevent accumulation of ice on antennas which are required for navigation and communication the sensors fitted below the hull must be protected against the ice for ice strengthened vessels the bridge wings should be enclosed or should be designed to protect navigation equipment and its operating personnel ships should have non magnetic means to determine and display their heading both the mains should be independent and be connected to ship's main and emergency source of power ships proceeding to latitudes over 80 degree should be fitted with at least one gnss compass or, or any other equipment which is performing equal to this the compass must be connected to ship main or emergency source of power However there is one add on to ROR rules in terms of navigation lights the ships involved in operation with an ice breaker escort shall be equipped with manually initiated flashing red light which is visible from astern the purpose of this light is to indicate when the ship is stopped this light have a range of visibility of at least 2 nautical miles communication this chapter tells us about how effective communication for ships and survival craft is maintained during a normal operation and emergency situation first let us understand the communication system of ships there must be a two way voice or data communication from ship to ship ship to shore at all points along the operating routes and these systems must be efficient in terms of working in predicted low temperatures high latitudes and also must have ability to contact rescue coordination center there must be means of communication during the escort and convoy operations like a sound signaling appliance facing aft which is fitted to warn the ship about the movements or the maneuver sound signals used must be as per the international code of signals communication equipment to be present to get required telemedical assistance in polar areas Okay, now let us talk about the requirement under communication for survival crafts and rescue boats. All rescue boats and lifeboats, whenever released for evacuation, must have a capability to maintain communication for the distress alerting, location, on-scene coordination, and if they also have equipment fitted to transmit signals for their location. So all these things must be present, and this lifeboat and rescue boat must be capable. all communication equipment on rescue boat and lifeboat should be capable of operation until maximum expected time of rescue okay i hope all these things which ever i have talked until now is just a fast forward of the information which has been depicted on the slides if you see the slides learn what i have written point by point that is far more than enough guys so now i will be just uh, ending this video of polar code series I hope that you have subscribed to my channel by now and if not please do subscribe to my channel for more interesting content guys and one more thing i have to tell you that uh, let me know if you have found my videos interesting if i am doing better to make you understand or not and uh, as well as if you have any doubts or if you want me to <laughs> to make videos on any particular topic and i will definitely make a videos on topics which you comment below and good luck for your exams thank you so much for watching till the end bye bye